Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Nathaniel again. Today I'm going to be talking about Out of Darkness by Ashley Hope Perez. This book came to my attention because on my way to work I was listening to NPR and they were interviewing Miss um, Perez about her book because it has become the fourth most banned or challenged book in the United States. Even though it was originally published in 2015, it wasn't until about 2021 that some people started uh, making a fuss over it. Specifically, there is a video that I, I have linked down below um, of a woman named Cara Bell. She went to a, or she interrupted a school council meeting uh, to kind of rage against this book because of one of the lines that is in it that actually has very little to do with anything else. Um, clearly she didn't read the book because there's a lot more in it than what she uh, unironically is complaining about. And then I also included another video of the same woman who uh, caused a disturbance at a shopping center and is getting arrested in, in the video. So you can see what kind of uh, individual this person is. I'm always interested in you know the idea of banned books because I'm um, a big believer in of course freedom of speech and, and the press and everything but it's also I don't feel like other people should determine what you are able to watch or read and so with this being a young adult book um, I thought you know this would be interesting to, to find out it takes place in Texas in East Texas uh, specifically and that's where I grew up so it definitely, you know, piqued my interest. What Miss Perez does with this book, she's actually, she's using um, the 1937 explosion at the New London School, which is the worst school disaster in America, and has since led to um, adding the smell to natural gas uh, so that it's more easily detected. And it was also, um, New London was this town that, sat right next to one of the towns that I lived in, Overton, which is mentioned in the book, as well as Tyler and Kilgore. And as I grew up, you know, we used to go to the Kilgore Oil Museum, um, and I remember that, but I did not remember about this uh, explosion at the school. And so my my mom, I, you know, I talked to my mom and my, my older sister about it, and they both knew about it. My mom even had a book um, uh, about it because there is a museum for uh, about this explosion and there are several books written about the circumstances but what Miss Perez does is she uses it as a backdrop to tell a story about um, racism uh, primarily and it because she was interested in how sometimes fear and you, you want to blame others um, for circumstances and she wanted to to explore that idea of how the other communities in the area were affected by this um, this huge tragedy. So the story takes place, you know, mostly in 1936, uh, leading up to the explosion. It opens with a fast forward of the explosion, and then it goes back uh, to start telling that story. And it's told in sort of a Greek tragedy sort of way, where each of the, you know, sort of short chapters are, um, they follow one of the several characters. And every so often there's a, even a, a chapter for the gang. So think of the chorus in a, a Greek tragedy making commentary about, you know, what's going on. Uh, the, primary, the primary characters are Naomi, who is a Mexican-American. She was living with her mother and her uh, grandmother and grandfather down in San Antonio. And her mother, whose first husband had died, ends up marrying this man, Henry, who is a, a white guy. And she ends up dying shortly after giving birth to uh, Naomi's stepbrother and sister, uh, Beto and Carrie. And so at the beginning of the story, Henry, who has, has some bad past, but he is trying to make himself you know, better. He's been encouraged by his pastor up in East Texas to bring his children, to include Naomi, even though she's his stepdaughter, up to East Texas and move on with his life. So he does that, and they they 
the school there in New London is a very good school. There's a lot of money because of the oil fields and everything that is being um, developed in that area. And then Naomi meets uh, Wash, short for Washington. He's a young black man who lives in Egypt town. It's the, the black community where his father is the superintendent of the black school and his mother was a teacher as well, but she is now working from the home because rules that regulate uh, how black families are allowed to, to work. So he is sort of a handyman all around. Uh, his parents expect him ultimately to go off to school, but what he likes doing is working with his hands. He's very good with you know building and structuring and planning and things like that. Well, he befriends Naomi and Beto and Carrie, and they spend a lot of time at the riverbank and doing different things and you know uh, some time at Wash's house and things like that. But going into the racism because Naomi is Mexican, um, she stands out like you know a sore thumb. Um, Wash's first interaction with her, she's in a tree because she likes climbing trees, and because of the distance her darkness, he thinks that she's actually, you know, of African descent at first. But she, as the sort of homekeeper, even though she's also going to school, she's, you know, female, so she takes care of the house as well. Um, she's not allowed to shop in the grocery store for New London, and she ends up shopping from um, Egypt Town's store with the help of, of Wash. And so we... We see these different things that happen um, concerning the racism that is not only the white against the black, but it's also there's a little bit of black against you know the the Mexican looking or um, even because the Carrie and Beto with Henry being Caucasian they are very light skinned and everyone assumes that they are simply Caucasian and don't realize that they have a mixed heritage. Um, we get into some of the background with Estelle, that's Naomi's mother, and Henry before he left, before the twins were born. Uh, we get into some of the interaction that he had with Naomi uh, when she was that much younger. And ultimately, this story is extremely tragic. Uh, after the explosion with all the children who have died or been injured, and I won't spoil any of that, but of course people want someone to blame and because Wash does all of these different um, at, jobs around the school for the superintendent and everything like that people start accusing him of being a part of what has happened and you can imagine where that goes um, it gets tamped down quite a bit by Pastor Tom and so People are able to get some of their anger out without, you know, hurting the Fuller family, Wash's family. Um, but then it moves on to the true tragedy that's right at the end of the book. And it's not something that is necessarily expected, but it's, it's not particularly surprising. And I find that it, I, I've read a lot of African American lit. And I, I love Toni Morrison, for instance, and uh, Beloved is one of my favorite books. And there's a scene in Beloved that is particularly uh, difficult. And I would say that the end of this book rivals that in difficulty. So to go back to the whole idea of the banning and this woman going into the, the council meeting and complaining about this one line, which is actually just a projection. It's, you know, it's the thoughts of the boys in the room as Naomi comes in. Um, the irony of that situation is that there is so much more to be concerned with. And even though I don't think that this book is appropriate for, let's say, young middle schoolers um, or elementary school, I would not ever propose to remove this from anyone's bookshelves. It It is a good story. There are these light moments. These Washington is a great character. He is extremely kind and thoughtful and helpful and capable. And Naomi, she's a bit nervous, but you know, you get those moments of peace where when they're at the river, his interaction with Beto and Carrie, um, his secret time with Naomi in their tree and things like that. And then you have 
you know, the hope that some other things, because there are positive people in it, in this story, and a lot of people who don't realize, you know, those just casual racisms that often take place. So I do recommend, you know, this book. It, it is good. It's won several of awards. I think that it's unfortunate that people have such a hard time um, accepting certain realities. And it, it's not celebrating them to talk about them or to write about them. Um, this is all a tragedy. And then the last thing I do want to say, um, because I thought that this was extremely clever, is I think that the, the cover is really neat. This is the braid on Naomi's hair. The braid is a prominent piece of the story. It connects her to her mother. Um, after her mother died, they cut Estelle's braid, and so she actually keeps it with her. And then she wears her hair in the same way. Uh, her brother and sister, you know, often braid the hair and everything. But it is also symbolic of a rope for lynching. And I just think that's extremely sad. If you have any um, books that you know are pretty hard-hitting that you would recommend that people read so that they can open up their minds a little bit, you know, put them in the comments below. And other than that, you know, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, have a good day. Bye.